During the early portion of the 21st century, space power will also evolve into a separate and equal medium of warfare. Likewise, space forces will emerge to protect military and commercial national interests and investment in the space medium due to their increasing importance. That was a quote from the document the Pentagon published in the late 1990s titled Vision 2020. The document was published in order to state publicly the advancements made in the space, rocket, and war industries and to state their plans for the future. Two decades later, the Pentagon and multinational corporations have kept in line with the claims made in the document Vision 2020, and now that the U.S. has officially established a new military branch, the Space Force, the claims made seem only to be proven as time ticks forward. In 2015, President Barack Obama passed the U.S. Commercial Space Launch Competitiveness Act. This law gave U.S. citizens the right to own parts of celestial bodies. This means that U.S. citizens are now able to lay claim to asteroids and mine resources from them and will be able to own the materials they find there. Until now, space has largely been treated as publicly owned, meaning that nobody could claim commercial ownership of anything that was out there. This law is in direct violation of the 1967 Outer Space Treaty. Article 2 of this treaty states, Outer space, including the moon and other celestial bodies, is not subject to national appropriation by claim of sovereignty, by means of use or occupation, or by any other means. The United States did sign on to this treaty, but as according to their plans laid out in Vision 2020, the Pentagon and multinational corporations believe they can break all treaties. Breaking treaties has been a frequent pattern of the U.S. government for centuries. Just ask the indigenous peoples of Turtle Island. Essentially, this law is moving capitalism into outer space. The world knows how capitalism has destroyed everything we know since its inception 400 years ago. From inequality to bank bailouts, depressions and recessions, institutional racism and patriarchy, and now environmental destruction. The system that created and perpetuated all of these issues is moving into outer space. What happens when competition between corporations and militaries intensify because they are fighting over an asteroid potentially worth over $5 trillion? Who will be the one to resolve this dispute? How will it be addressed? What happens when an American corporation and a Chinese corporation begin fighting over an asteroid, especially when each corporation has a military behind it to protect them? How will we even know what is going on in space during these ownership fights? There won't be any media there, except maybe media owned by the same rich fat cats claiming control of planetary bodies. Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk are already competing with each other over contracts with the U.S. government for their adventures in outer space. And Elon Musk has been the poster child for colonizing Mars and has been speaking about it for years. In fact, Musk doesn't really care how we get there, even if it costs people their lives. But it's a glorious adventure and uh, it'll be amazing, an, an amazing experience. And your name will go in history. Yes, you might not. <laughs> it's going to be uncomfortable and you probably won't have good food and all these things, you know. <laughs> so so uh, if, 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 if an arduous and dangerous journey where you may not come back alive, um, but it's a glorious adventure. Sounds appealing. And Mars you still, is the place. And you still have That's the thousands of, of volunteers, if not millions of volunteers, who would yeah. want to go. I, I mean, honestly, a bunch of people probably will die in the beginning. It's, yeah. it's tough sledding over there. You We're know? an exploring um, species. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not forever. We don't want to make anyone go. So it's, like, <laughs> it's volunteers only. This is how billionaires, also known as monopoly capitalists, think about the people of the world, about the planet, and especially about outer space. It's all expendable to them. Ever heard of the expression, profit over people? This has been the driving philosophy of capitalists, and we have 400 years to prove it. 
Now, this philosophy is being exported to the moon, Mars, and asteroids in our solar system. There's another issue to be concerned about, especially about Elon Musk's wet dream of colonizing Mars. They want nuclear power to get there. DARPA, the uber-rich and tax-dollar-eating research and development agency of the U.S. War Department, has recently awarded three major deals for the development of nuclear-powered propulsion systems. General Atomics, Blue Origin, and Lockheed Martin are the prime contractors for these deals. Where have we heard these names before? Oh yeah, they are major weapons producing corporations, and now they are developing nuclear systems, which pose a major threat to life on Earth if one of these propulsion systems were to, I don't know, blow up before it left Earth's atmosphere? Some say we don't have anything to worry about, but I swear I saw rockets explode with astronauts on it before. minute 15 seconds velocity 2900 feet per second altitude 9 nautical miles downrange distance 7 nautical miles dr robert zubrin president of the mars society and a former member of lockheed martin's scenario development team hmm weird coincidence here dr zubrin published an article in march 2021 pushing president joe biden in supporting colonization of mars Many articles like this are being published week after week to push for missions to Mars, mainly from people who would benefit from such dangerous adventures. As I see it, there's three reasons why Mars should be the goal of our space program. And in short, it's because Mars is where the science is, it's where the challenge is, and it's where the future is. It's surprising these people don't push for, I don't know, ending the endless wars, changing our infrastructure to avoid more environmental destruction, ending homelessness or paying reparations to indigenous and black people for, you know, genocide and slavery, makes me really wonder who they hang out with on weekends. An op-ed piece in Undark said, Foundational concepts such as conquest, frontier, and manifest destiny can affect not only how people think about space, but also how they act towards it. These concepts promote colonialist ideas, space capitalism, and a lack of regulation. Potent symbols of this trend are the more than 3,000 operational satellites currently orbiting Earth, many of them privately owned. For people who use the stars to navigate or who incorporate celestial bodies into cultural, spiritual, and religious practices, this intrusion into the skies threatens to compromise a way of life. And it is a sobering reminder that space and the sky don't really belong to everyone after all. The lack of protections and regulations for the night sky as well as the monetary incentives for commercial satellites, which make up almost 80% of U.S. satellites, make it vulnerable to the highest bidder. This sentiment perfectly describes the experiment we call the United States of America, a nation built out of the colonization and genocide of indigenous people, the enslavement of African people who built the U.S., and then a nation that was constructed into the world's superpower by bombing dozens of nations after establishing its permanent military-industrial congressional complex, and exploiting the poorest nations on earth, polluting, poisoning, and destroying the environment in which we all depend on, and now these sociopaths want to bring American democracy to outer space. The global network stands with the billions of people on Earth who want a peaceful world for our children to grow up in, a world in which we plan for the next seven generations to live better lives than we did. We oppose these unnecessary, dangerous, and provocative actions from the U.S. government and the corporations which control it. We stand with and for the people of the world. We stand for peace, and we stand for true democracy. We want to keep space for peace. We are 
Got to go.